Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to achieve a negative pressure. So we all know that liquid water flows to the lowest point in its container. When it all settles, you'll see that it forms a flat surface on the bottom. It all flows to the lowest point in the container. So if I had a tube coming out the bottom here, you'd expect the two levels of liquid to be exactly the same. As you can see in this experiment here. So we should also expect the same from this experiment, where I have four different containers and they're all connected at the bottom here. So that if I pour liquid in one of them, it should flow to the others. But now watch what happens when I pour in the liquid. Pour it in carefully. <laughs> Look at that. So now let's zoom in so you can see what's going on here. So you can see if I draw a line here, they're all connected at the bottom, yet these liquids don't all come to the same level. They're all completely open at the top. Okay, so what just happened here is extremely interesting. Remember that at all locations in these liquids, the pressures have to be equal at any horizontal surface. So at the bottom of here, they're all the exact same pressure. If they weren't at the same pressure, then there would be a flow happening because pressure always causes a liquid to flow from high pressure to low pressure. But there's no flow happening, so that means at any point, if I were to draw a line here, all of the pressures across all four of these tubes would be equal. So we know that if I were to draw a line across all four of these tubes here, all of these pressures would be at a positive pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure. And it's positive because as you go further down in a liquid, the pressure increases. Like when you dive down in the ocean, the pressure gets more and more the deeper you go. And as I increase in the water level, right when I get to this air-water interface here, and I draw my line across here on the big tube, that's where I know it's an atmospheric pressure. So we know that as I went from down here to up here, the pressure decreased more and more and more. And we know that right here, we're already at atmospheric pressure. Well, that would mean if I keep going up, I'm going to get a negative pressure, meaning a slight vacuum in the liquid. So this means that if I were to actually be able to measure this pressure in this small tube here, I would actually get a slight vacuum, a negative pressure relative to atmospheric pressure. So that should be really weird to you. That means that this small liquid gas interface here, the two pressures aren't equal. It means that the gas pressure is higher than the liquid pressure as opposed to this tube where the liquid pressure and the gas pressure are exactly equal right at the interface. And to prove this to you a little bit, look at the curvature of this meniscus here. The meniscus is right where the liquid and the gas meet on the glass. You'll notice that it has a familiar shape. It's almost as if a balloon is being blown up. Notice how it has the exact same shape as this. So the reason this has the exact same shape as the meniscus, because the balloon is at a higher pressure than the tube, and so it's bowing out because the pressure is pushing it downward. So it's able to hold it better near the edges, but not as much in the center. And that's exactly what's happening in the meniscus. So in the meniscus, the air is at the higher pressure, and the liquid is at actually a lower pressure. And so the air is pushing down, and the air is pushing down into it because it's had a higher pressure going into a lower pressure. So what all this means is that as the capillary force increases in smaller and smaller tubes, water can get sucked up into it because it lowers the pressure inside of there. But the question is, how low can that pressure get? In this case, we're lower than atmospheric pressure, but we're still above an absolute vacuum. So what is the highest that that liquid can actually get? Well, I showed in a previous video, when you lower the pressure of a liquid, it boils at a lower temperature. So what that means is that we might come to a limit when you reach the boiling point of water at room temperature. So that would mean if you got your tube longer than 10 meters, then at the top, you'd be below the boiling point of water, and so your water would start to boil, and once it's boiling, it just creates water vapor, and so you wouldn't be able to pull it up anymore. That's why around the limit of straws is around 10 meters. Once it's, once it's past 10 meters long, then you can't suck up any more water. So 10 meters is around the point where you'd start to get bubbles of water vapor forming, and it would slow your sucking action, so you wouldn't be able to suck up any more water in a straw. 
So around 10 meters is the height when water can start boiling, but that doesn't mean that it will start boiling there. You can actually increase the height of this even more to get it to a point where it would normally boil, but if there are no nucleation points, then it won't boil. So what that means is that you can actually get tubes that are longer than 10 meters, as long as they don't have a lot of nucleation points in them, and you can still suck up water into them due to the capillary force. But what that means is that any water that's in this tube above around 10 meters is actually at a lower pressure than absolute zero, meaning an absolute relative pressure, it's lower than that, lower than a complete vacuum. Now that sounds really weird to say that a pressure is lower than a complete vacuum. And the reason it sounds weird is because we're used to talking about pressures with gases. Now for a gas, you can never get lower than an absolute pressure of zero. But for a liquid and a solid, that's not the case. So what it means to say that a liquid has a negative pressure, or a pressure lower than absolute zero atmospheres, means that it's actually under tension. Now we're used to saying that solids can be under tension. You can pull on them, and they usually can hold themselves together. But liquids usually can't hold themselves together, unless they're under a very specific setup where they don't cavitate or form water vapor bubbles, then you can actually pull on them. So once your trees get too tall, then whether or not you have any nucleation sites, your water will for sure boil. So that's why in trees like redwood trees, they don't actually use capillary force to pull water up all the way to the top, but they actually absorb moisture in through the air because they can't pull water up that tall. Now if you want to learn more about trees and capillary action, Veritasium did an extremely well-made video on this around seven years ago. You should go check it out. Now this capillary force happens whenever a liquid adheres to the surface of some solid. Now this capillary action is happening because on the smaller tubes there's more surface area to volume ratio and so it can adhere to the surface better and it pulls it up the tube. Notice how on this larger tube you can actually see the water start to climb it as well. This is called a meniscus. It's a, a curvature that you see in the liquid due to the adherence of the water to the side of the glass. So basically the side of the glass pulls it up. So when you have mostly sides of glass compared to the volume, then it can pull it up even more. So the smaller the tube, the larger the rise in liquid that you're going to get. Now what's really cool about this once I dump it out is notice that the amount of liquid that's left suspended in each of these tubes is about the height of liquid that was above where the liquid level was in the large tube. What that means is that for this size of tubing, this column of water is about the weight that it can hold above atmospheric pressure. For this one it's just a little bit, but for this one it can hold a large column. Notice there's nothing below it keeping the liquid in there except capillary force. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.